Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about polynomial division. I will say before we start that in watching this video, I'm assuming that you have already seen my videos on polynomial addition and multiplication, parts 1 and 2. If you haven't seen those, please go ahead and check them out, or at least make sure that you understand the concept of adding or subtracting or multiplying polynomials together, because I use those concepts here. So we know that given polynomials p of x and q of x, we can add them, we can subtract them from one another in different orders, and we can multiply them. Clearly, we can do these same things with numbers. We can add, subtract, and multiply. But we haven't talked about division yet. We can divide numbers, or rather, we can divide one number by the other as long as the second one is not equal to zero. So it's natural to wonder if we can do the same thing with polynomials. In other words, can I divide one polynomial into another and get a polynomial in return? The answer is yes, but we saw with polynomial multiplication, you have to take some careful steps. So, when you're talking about polynomial division, you also have to handle it a little bit carefully. We'll go over some familiar examples really quickly, using numbers, to give you a general refresher or layout of the setup. As a for instance, take 10 divided by 5. Traditional long division gives us an answer that looks something like this. The 5 and 10 produce a 2 at the top, called the quotient, thus we can write 10 in the following way. 10 equals the quotient 2 times the divisor 5. Similarly, with 5 divided by 13, we see that 5 does not divide into 13 evenly, so we get a remainder of 3 and a quotient of 2. In other words, 13 can be expressed as 2 times 5 plus the remainder 3. What we'll see is that polynomials behave this way as well. It's true that if I'm given polynomials p of x and d of x, where d of x is not equal to 0, then we can find polynomials q of x and r of x such that we get the following equation. p of x equals q of x times d of x plus r of x. Since polynomial multiplication makes sense, we can, in fact, get an answer for q of x times d of x. So this whole quantity is something that we can compute and write down. The whole point is to get the polynomial p of x and write it as a product of other polynomials where we have the addition of a remainder term. Even though this looks like a pretty busy expression, it's the exact same thing that we saw on the previous slide where we wrote 13 as the product of a divisor 5 and a quotient 2 and add a remainder of 3. To ease the transition here, we are going to use the same words divisor, quotient, and remainder. The polynomials p of x and d of x are always going to be given in the problem. We start with these and we find the rest. d of x in this case will be called the divisor. And when we find q of x and r of x, q of x will be called the quotient and r of x will be called the remainder. Sometimes the remainder term comes out to be zero, which means that the divisor divides evenly into the polynomial. Other times, the remainder is non-zero but it will always have a degree less than the divisor. There is a long division setup, but we'll begin with some simple cases. Consider 8 times x cubed divided by 4 times x squared. 4 times x squared is definitely not the zero polynomial, so we can go ahead and rewrite this as a fraction. Everything on the numerator and denominator is a product, so we can begin canceling out terms. Looking at the numbers, 8 over 4 is 8 divided by 4, and that just becomes 2. Then, looking at the x terms, x cubed over x squared gives us this result from exponential operations. Therefore, our final answer, 2 times x to the 3 minus 2 becomes 2x. This next example is a little bit more interesting, but uses virtually the same steps. Consider 2x cubed minus 4x divided by the polynomial 2x squared. Again, we have that 2x squared is not the zero polynomial, so this division is valid. Again, set it up as a fraction. The numerator is not one big product like it was before, so we have to look for common factors that appear in each term in the numerator before we can start canceling anything out. Notice that 2x cubed factors into 2x squared times x, and 4x squared factors into 2x squared times 2. This means that we can factor out a 2x squared from the numerator and leave behind x minus 2. 
Therefore, the numerator looks like 2x squared times the quantity x minus 2 over the denominator of 2x squared. Since 2x squared is a factor of both the numerator and denominator, they cancel. This leaves us with the final answer of x minus 2. The two answers that we found are actually our quotient terms. Here, it looks like 4x squared divided into 8x cubed evenly and 2x squared divided into 2x cubed minus 4x squared evenly as well. What it means is that each of these polynomials and their divisors give their individual quotients and a remainder of zero. Now we're ready to look at the bigger picture. This is the long division setup. We use this technique when we can't simply put polynomials in a fraction and start canceling terms out. In this general setup, let p of x and q of x be polynomials that we're dividing into one another. First thing we'll do is write this division bar, put p of x inside and d of x outside. Step two is to find q of x, the quotient, and r of x, the remainder. I'm gonna show by example how this works, but we'll end up with an answer that has our q of x revealed at the top of the division bar and our r of x revealed at the bottom. Once we have all this information, all we have to do is write p of x divided by d of x is equal to q of x plus r of x over d of x. The right hand side of this equation is what our final answer will end up looking like. We'll use this first example to demonstrate what this process looks like. We'll divide the polynomial x squared plus x plus 1 by x minus 1. The first step is to correctly place the polynomials underneath and outside of the division bar. The polynomial we're dividing goes underneath the division bar, while the polynomial we're dividing by goes outside. Similar to standard long division of numbers, we're going to use the inside and the outside to help us produce a quotient term that will show up on top. The main idea here is we are going to multiply the polynomial x minus 1 by terms that we have to come up with so that certain terms appear. In our case, the first term that should appear is x squared because it is first in the list. We choose x squared because that is the leading term of the polynomial that we are dividing into, so that x squared shows up in the product. Now when we look at the polynomial x minus 1 on the outside, the leading term is x, so it's essentially going to call the shots here. Think of it like this. The leading term in the divisor that's written on the outside is what's going to help us find the terms on the inside. So x squared is going to be our first target. So the question is, what can I multiply x minus 1 by so that an x squared shows up? Notice that if I multiply the quantity by x itself, the product is x squared minus x. This is what we wanted, so I'll put the x term that we came up with on the top of the division bar. It becomes part of our quotient. Then take the product that we came up with and subtract it from the polynomial on the inside. After subtracting, we get 0 plus 2x. The reason we wanted to multiply the divisor by something so that an x squared appears is so that after this subtraction, the x squared gets canceled. The next step is to drop the 1, and we can erase the 0. Now 2x is our new target. So in step 2, the goal is to come up with something to multiply our divisor by so that a 2x appears in the product. If we choose 2 itself, notice that x minus 1 times 2 gives a product of 2x minus 2. Since we chose 2, we will add it to our quotient up at the top. And then we will subtract the product 2x minus 2 from the polynomial above like we did before. After the subtraction, we get an answer of 3. Since there are no more terms underneath the division bar to drop down, this means that we're done. The hard part is over, so all we have to do is read off our answer. We started with polynomials x squared plus x plus 1 and the divisor x minus 1. Then we produce the quotient x plus 2 and the remainder 3. Therefore, x squared plus x plus 1 divided by x minus 1 is equal to the quotient x plus 2 plus the remainder 3 divided by the divisor x minus 1. And we're done. Watch part 2 for more examples.